What's up, everybody? Jack here. Welcome to another World of Warcraft classic tutorial. My character's Gull, I play on Bigglesworth, and I'm with the guild Vicious. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to kite Terramus to Stormwind by yourself and get the loot. You're going to be able to get between 5 and 100 gold per kill, as long as you have some patience selling the blue BOEs that you get from killing Terramus. The most important part that you understand here, even if you're just about to leave this video, is don't take him to Bolivar. If you let the King of Stormwind kill him, that means nobody gets the loot. And if you're mad at one of these hunters pulling this guy to the trade district, the worst thing you can do to us is take him to the keep because then he dies and nobody gets the loot. Don't let that happen. Now let's talk about where do you turn these spheres in? because you're gonna be getting a lot of these once you get the system down. It's directly in the center of the red part of the Blasted Lands. There's this dude, and he has two quests. One is for a more common version of this that you can get from any trash in the Blasted Lands, and the second is for the one that Terramus drops. Terramus will drop between zero and three of these per time you kill him, which is why sometimes you can get up to 100 gold per kill. And each kill only takes around 15 minutes. Now, what kind of loot can you get? And the first thing I want to tell you here is that if you look up drop tables of these emerald encrusted chests online, almost all the drop tables are incomplete because what actually happens is that the game can give you any blue world drop and maybe also a green from level 41 to 52, I, I believe. I, it might be a little bit different than there but I've gotten drops that don't show on any of the available drop, tales, uh, drop tables on like WoWDB or WoW Classic and these kind of databases. Um, I've also gotten things that show up on, on the drop tables, but what I want you to understand is you can essentially get any blue or green or purple between the level of 41 and 52. That's basically how it works. So it's actually possible to get a lot of money from a Terramus kill. You just have to get the loot. Someone has to get the loot. So don't let Bolivar kill him, okay? What talents are you gonna need? Honestly, you don't need any talents. However, that being said, there are three in particular that are relevant to a, ter a Terramus kite, okay? The most useful one is gonna be Hawkeye. And this is because if you don't have Hawkeye, then if you can attack Terramus, he can also hit you with his soul consumption ability. And that's gonna be what knocks you out of Cheetah and messes everything up. So you wanna be able to attack him without him attacking you. And that's why having Hawkeye is the most useful because that six yard safe zone means you can land an attack on him and keep him aggroed and he can try and attack you and fail to hit you because you're too far away. It's very useful. Next, we're looking at deterrence. Deterrence is specifically useful when you need to, cut, you need to tank Terramus for a moment. And this really only happens once you're in Stormwind because if you're out of Stormwind, it's not necessary at all. You don't want to ever be in melee range, but maybe you mess up and deterrence could be useful. It could keep you alive long enough to summon your pet, have your pet taunt, get aggro, feign, and then run away and land another arrow as your pet dies and you keep running away from Terramus, okay? Next one's pathfinding. I like pathfinding the most because it increases your movement speed, and this just gives you more flexibility. The one caveat is you're going to get out of range of Terramus faster, but honestly, that's going to be useful. So let's look at this attack, this soul consumption attack. How does this work exactly? What's going on here? So every roughly 30 to 40 seconds, Terramus is going to start to cast an attack that is an AoE attack. It's going to damage all area, all enemies in a like cone in front of him and also a bit behind him, but not as far as in front of him. You're about to see exactly what that looks like. Now, the, the great thing here is the moment he does this, it puts everybody in combat and everybody gets on Terramus's aggro table. This means that at that moment you can die and it still continues, okay? So what items are gonna be relevant here? What really, you don't need that much. Um, having major healing potions is really important. If you have 10 major healing potions, you're gonna be fine even if you mess up, basically, right? But say that you're a lower level because you can actually kite Terramus at like level 30 or 40. Uh, it's way harder, but it's way more challenging and thrilling, right? And 
you can actually use shadow protection potions because his breath, that AoE attack you just saw, does shadow damage. So if you're a lower level, you can effectively heal yourself without having to be level 45, okay? Now, how do we find Teramis? Because a lot of people like, oh, you wanna know where he spawns and all that. Well, guess what? He's only in the blasted lands, but you shouldn't even bother looking. What you should do is type slash who, and then type in the blasted lands, and you're gonna get a list of all the players in the blasted lands. And then just send them a nice, friendly, quick little message saying like, hey, have you seen Teramis the Devourer? He's a big dragon. You gotta say he's a big dragon because a lot of people don't know his name, they just know he's a dragon. He kills people questing in the blasted lands all the time. And if he's spawned, multiple people are gonna respond to you saying they see him, okay? Sometimes you're gonna get a troll, especially as you develop a reputation and they're gonna wanna waste your time, but that's a great way to find him, okay? So once you find him, where are you gonna take him? Well, you're gonna go up north through the Blasted Lands, and then you're gonna hit Swamp of Sorrows. You need to be a bit careful in this area because there's a lot of guards on the paths and a lot of uh, NPCs. So if you're a lower level, it's harder. After this, you're going through Deadwind Pass, and then you're going north and jumping through this bridge area. Try not to fall off the edge and die. I've done that. I've died every possible way you can die doing this, just as far as I understand. You're gonna go through Duskwood, and you can do shorter ways than this, but honestly, when you're learning the kite, um, like I just cut through there, you might actually wanna go through Red Ridge because if you get stunned once by an NPC, it's gonna mess you up. So you wanna stay on a path just so you can just focus on kiting. Uh, it may take you a while to get kiting to just be natural. You may have to focus a lot to be able to do it. So don't try and type or talk to anybody while you're kiting until you've gotten used to it. And then you just go into Stormwind and from there, Trade District is his home. So now let's, let's look at the kiting itself because this is the core of, of, of farming Taramis really. There's two main parts. There's kiting him and then there's get, being able to get the loot. Okay, so when you kite him, you're gonna be in Cheetah, but you have to turn Cheetah off whenever he uses that Shadow Flame attack. So you can see here that I shoot him. He's using Shadow Flame, or sorry, Soul Consumption. I turn Cheetah off, but then I'm actually out of range of his Soul Consumption attack, so it doesn't land anyway. But basically, you want to always, always turn Cheetah off habitually every time he uses Soul Consumption. So you want to get an add-on that enables you to see his cast bar, and you should also understand it's not always going to work. There's times where I've gotten hit because I don't see the cast bar, but if you look at him and you see a glowing orange fire in his mouth, that means he's about to cast Soul Consumption, or it means he's glitched and just stuck that way, which happens, all right? So let's talk more about getting the loot, because that, that moment, this is how you get the loot. You, you have to kite him around the trade district until people get so frustrated that they just kill him. But you can't die. You can feign death, that's okay. But you can't die, because if you die, it takes you off of the aggro table, you're dead, okay? You have to stay on to the top of the aggro table, basically. And to do that, you have to spread the people doing damage to him as much as possible. And the way to do this is to get him to land those shadow or those soul consumptions on the trade district multiple times. So you're just gonna go and figure eights around there, okay? And now that's pretty much all of the tips. Now I'm gonna show you a full kite without any cutting or editing. I want you to understand exactly what's going on, right? And this also gives me more time to talk about all of the other stuff I may have missed over. He's gonna roam around the Blasted Lands, and there's three main clusters of mountains, and you can think of Teramis as circling one, circling another, and then circling another. He goes in this kind of triple figure eight pattern, okay? And when you start fighting him, I recommend that you use aim shot, um, or like try and do some burst damage, because it's gonna be helpful for you if he has a higher amount of threat. And you're gonna have a good amount of threat with him just because you're the only thing attacking him for like 15 minutes. But ultimately, a warrior will always be able to taunt him off of you. So a warrior can always stop you for as long as the warrior can stay alive. And if he has a healer, that means a warrior and a healer can always stop you, okay? But you don't want other random people just getting aggro from you. And it's also gonna increase the chance that you get loot if you do more damage to him. 
Like, when you kite this guy as a druid, and you're just attacking him with things he's immune to constantly, it's much easier for somebody else to get the loot, because they can just do some damage to him and steal the tag from you. The tagging on these kind of bosses is a little bit more complicated than a regular mob, and you're going to find sometimes that when you're in Stormwind, um, it is actually possible for other people to take the tag from you while you're still fighting. That kind of stuff does happen. And also, if somebody else has taken the tag from you, it's possible for you to get it back. But you need his portrait to be colored like that, and it helps a lot to do some more damage. So let's, let's talk more about the kite. Because the fundamental part of it is learning the route. Like, you, you see these NPCs here. If you're a lower level, you have to stay further away. I, I just have to not run into them because I'm 60, right? So if you're level 60, it's going to be easier. But you're probably going to die sometimes because you're not paying attention and you run into a mob and it lands a hit on you and that stuns you. Because you, if you're at max range from Terramus and you get stunned, you will be able to recover and run before he comes and kills you. However, if... There's another mob there that increases. If you get stunned twice, that means you're getting meleeed by Terramus. That's happening, okay? That's the reality. He's too far away. As you can see here, turn off Cheetah, get damaged, turn Cheetah back on. And that's why you kind of need these healing potions, because you're effectively going to take between 400 and 700 damage every 30 to 45 seconds, okay? And you can use potions that give you shadow protection to get away from that but that's ultimately what's the turning point for whether you can do the kite or not do the kite and you can do the kite as a really low level like it is possible to do it at level 20 uh, if you have enough like shadow protection potions and other ways to keep yourself uh, alive if you have one of those stamina buffs um, those kind of things can go a long way, and it's it's honestly pretty fun to do it as a lower level because it's so like if he gets anywhere near you, he dies, and he has an attack that can kill you. That's you know it's it's really hard, but you can practice it, and it's not worth not practicing just because you're not level sixty. Okay, it's gonna take a while, but it's nowhere near as hard as a lot of the other stuff you can do as a hunter. Um, like doing tribute runs is essentially the most challenging thing um, from my perspective because tribute runs require you to do so many things at the right moment in the right way consecutively, right? Whereas Kiting Terramus, you get used, once you get used to it, it's all about do you have healing potions or do you not? You can eventually get so good that you keep him tagged and you dodge his uh, every one of his attacks so you can kite him without any material. Um, but that's challenging. That's genuinely pretty hard. You need to really understand his pathing really well and having some good talents like having improved Cheetah um, is really going to help with that kind of thing. But that's not necessary. You don't, you don't need to get that good. You just need to be able to turn Cheetah off and not get stunned and keep attacking him. Okay? So how are you going to keep aggro? Because depending on your level, you, you're going to lose aggro of Terramus if you fail to attack him, right? So instant attacks are really ideal here, and there's two that I encourage you to use. Um, depending on your mana situation, you might not be able to deal damaging attacks all the time. So what you want to do is get a rank 1 arcane shot, or something that's really low mana, that you can keep casting and your mana regenerates faster than you use that much mana. However, keep in mind that it is beneficial to land an auto attack in every now and then, especially if you're interested in getting the loot. And if you want to get the loot, it's going to be almost impossible if you're like level 30. But it's going to be much simpler to get the loot if you're level 60. Um, it's genuinely hard to get the loot when you're a much lower level because uh, something about the way that the the, ta the threat tables work and everything, you just you get wiped out by everybody else in threat. So then you don't end up getting the loot. And that, that's why Bolivar, the king of Stormwind, will screw everything up because he does so much damage that the game considers it an NPC kill and nobody gets the loot. And that's the last thing you want to happen. So even though most hunters will take him to Bolivar and the whole of Trade District will yell, take him to Bolivar, you don't want that to happen. You actually want him to land as many of these AoE attacks on the Trade District as possible because this is going to spread the combat amongst so many people that the chance of you being the one with the most threat is pretty high, even if he takes so much damage that he dies. 
that's what you want. You literally want these AOE attacks to land on the trade district. It's the only way to regularly and reliably get the loot as the only person. Like, these kites can be done without a group, without a healer, without any of that. You just need to be able to heal yourself with potions and use Cheetah and turn it off and on. And that's it. Then you just take him to Stormwind, okay? So you're going to make a lot of basically predictable mistakes. I'm going to tell you a couple of the ways that you're going to die when you're trying to do this. The first and easiest one, uh, one actually calls you to die, but Teramis is just going to disappear. You should perform an attack every time you possibly can. So that means if you're using Arcane Shot or if you're using Distracting Shot, which I'll get into in a moment, you need to perform this attack every time it's off cooldown. And that is actually attacking twice as much as you need to. But this buys you a bit of time because if something happens or you miss or some you know environmental thing distracts you for a moment, you want to have a buffer period. So that's why I highly encourage you to use a low cost mana ability that does some kind of damage and use that regularly. I use Distracting Shot, and that's just because sometimes other hunters will try and steal Taramis from you, and you can prevent another hunter from stealing it from you as long as you've done a decent amount of damage to Taramis, and you consistently use Distracting Shot to keep your aggro high. Then it's going to be really hard for another hunter to take the DPS from you unless they're in a position to stand still and do a really high amount of burst damage, okay? That being said, a warrior will always be able to take him from you, whether you use Distracting Shot or not. Distracting Shot just makes it easier when other hunters try and steal him from you. And ultimately, as long as you keep attacking Terramus, it's okay if somebody else is the target of Terramus, because you can still get the loot as long as you do a decent amount of damage to him, okay? Even if, like, uh, there's times that uh, a group of five has come out to defend Stormwind and killed Taramis in Elwyn because they knew I was bringing him to Stormwind, but I still got the loot, even though the group of five killed him, right? And it was pretty funny because they, they actually, they totally misunderstood me. They thought that I was taking Taramis to this funeral for a really well-known WoW player, this memorial that was happening. I actually wasn't. I, I just take Terramus to Stormwood whenever I see him so that he dies and I get the loot because it's awesome. It's fun. I love how interactive it is. People think I'm a hero. They also hate me and put me on ignore. It's amazing. You get a lot of uh, a bounce, bounce back from other players, right? And you develop sort of a reputation. And what you'll find is <laughs> sometimes you get well-known enough as the person who kites Terramus that even though there's like tons of other people who kite Terramus on a server, when one of them does something, you're going to get blamed for it. It's pretty funny, and that's inevitably going to happen if you do this consistently. And honestly, I, I freaking love that. I think it's really enjoyable. Um, there's times that, like, the, the most fun times are when other players do stuff and it throws you off. Like, I've had situations where, like I said, a group came and killed him. Another time, another hunter stole him from me and took him to Booty Bay. Um, there was another situation where I brought him to Stormwind, and then a druid took him away from Stormwind to defend it, and I brought him back to Stormwind because I got aggro off of the druid. Dru druids are a bit easier to steal aggro from if you're using Distracting Shot and doing some damage. Um, being able to get some burst damage in is really, really going to help for that kind of thing. But you're going to find that it's not always smooth. Like, sometimes other players literally prevent you from doing this. They, they do things that you can't anticipate, and it's really fun and amazing. And some of the best experiences I have ever had is just watching watching new players die. Uh, I mean, uh, it's genuinely amazing. I love, there's something about seeing Terramus land a soul consumption and watching 12 players in front of you instantly die. It's just immensely satisfying. And it, it's, I, I know that some of you are gonna hate, well, honestly, if you're watching this video, you're probably like that too. So I feel you, right? But, a lot of people dislike that kind of stuff, but hey, hey, if I was one of these level, like, 12s, I just picked up World of Warcraft, I was just walking through the peaceful forest, and then, boom, dragon kills me! What the hell? Where'd that come from? That's awesome! Like, it's genuinely fun! It makes the game more interactive, and, like, what's, what's, 
what's the sense of always being safe in your capital city? You're not safe on a PvP server anyway. A rogue could gank you or whatever. You're not really safe, you know? And in, and in Bigglesworth, if you're in Stormwind, you're, you're not safe, especially if you're level one. There's, there's a, a likely chance that if you're standing near a mailbox or an auction house in the trade district, you're just gonna die, you know? And I love that. I think it's great, but obviously I'm not... Uh, not everyone feels that way and I would be I would be uh, Irresponsible if I were to tell you that if you do this kind of kiting with Terramus Not everybody's gonna be happy about it. Some people are gonna report you and stuff But the reality is Blizzard chose to keep Terramus unleashed This is something they allow because in in retail Wow, they leased Terramus in classic Wow, they specifically decided to not leash Terramus, which is a hint at them nodding that the experience of being killed by Terramus in Stormwind is part of the game, right? So I don't really care too much about the haters, honestly. I take receiving some level of hate as a sign that I'm doing something interesting, right? Because <laughs> if, if somebody has an opinion about you at all, I mean, they know you exist. I mean, even if they're irritated and blaming all their life problems on you for, you know, having their bank all die once in Stormwind, it's pretty awesome. I'd rather be in that position, right? So, now let's talk a bit about when you get into the trade district. Um, I've covered that you're probably going to die at some point because you're going to get hit while you're in Cheetah and he's going to get too close to you. So, when that happens, you need to have your pet available and on full health, summon it, because it's alive, so it's going to be instant, have it attack once, and as soon as it lands one attack, you feign death. Now, feign death is a bit tricky, because it's not going to mean you don't get loot from Terramus, but it is going to mess up the threat, so that another person can easily gain superior threat, and then it's really hard to keep him pulled, or keep him attacking you. That being said, you'll still get the loot. You just won't get the loot if you die, because then you completely lose the tag. So you can use Feign Death, but be aware it's going to make it way easier for someone else to steal him from you. If you want to do this regularly and reliably, you need to bring him into the Trade District without feigning death, and keep him in the Trade District without feigning death, okay? And the way to do that is to land all of these attacks on the trade district because inevitably warriors and other things will start taunt rotations they will eventually tank him and dps will kill him but they're not going to do that unless they're getting in combat all the time right these people are trying to go about their daily lives their busy stormwind lives they got stuff to do and they don't want to be in combat so you got to put everybody in the trade district in combat so that they kill Terramus for you. I usually give people a warning, but people still bitch about me all the time. And then people also message me and say I'm like awesome. You're gonna get both. I honestly don't know if more people are mad or more people are happy about it. I couldn't tell you. But this is exactly what you want to happen. Oh, oh, that, that moment, that's what you want. And you just wanna keep doing that over and over and over again. And honestly, sometimes I have so much fun doing this that I just completely forget about what, what else I'm doing. Some of the most fun moments I've had in WoW are kiting Terramus. It's really, like, it's something that... It's funny, too, because you can actually get a lot of gold from it. Like, it's completely possible. You can, you can get a Warden Staff. There's certain epics that you can get from the things that Terramus drops. Um, but a lot of people perceive Terramus as having shit drops because there's nothing really good in particular that he's going to drop all the time. He has a guaranteed chance, almost, not guaranteed, because he can actually drop zero of the um, spheres. But he drops between zero and three, so it's basically like he drops two, right? This, you can see, is... Uh, I understand how a lot of people will get mad at me, because I, I totally purposefully bring him into the auction house. I try and get him to land attacks as dramatically as possible. You can see here, I was actually about to die. But then a warrior taunted him off, and that's usually the turning point. Once a warrior taunts Terramus away from you, that's when it's going to turn around. 
because the warrior is probably going to get healed by some random other person. And what you're going to find is there's actually there's a, a specific threshold. You want to kite Terramus when Stormwind is at like mid capacity because if, it, if it's too soon, it's not interesting. If there's too many players, like if you try and do this during world buff time, they just kill him almost immediately. And on Bigglesworth, people are used to this happening. So there's like specific groups of people that know exactly what to do when they see Terramus and they kill him like immediately before he fucks everyone up. And that's fine, that's awesome. She got the loot faster, but it's also more boring. I really like it when it's more interesting, right? All right, guys. That's pretty much the end of this video. If you like my tutorials, check out some of my other WoW videos. I have content about farming Mole tribute runs. I also have content about farming nature resistance gear and other things. Most of my YouTube channel is about earning money online. So if that's something that you're interested in, check it out. All right, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you there. If you wanna talk to me, I offer private consultations about earning money and how to use the internet to leverage what you enjoy so that you can earn money off of essentially anything you enjoy. I offer a free consultation for 30 minutes and then if you want, if you like it after that, it's $20 per 30 minute session. If you're interested in that, look at the link in the description, go to calendly.com and book a call with me. All right guys, thanks for watching. See you next time. Ciao.